Greetings, everyone. I'm Gail Masinda, and I'm delighted to welcome you back to History Heights. When talking about the American Civil War, we often read that it began on April 12, 1861. That's the day when the Confederate troops fired on Fort Sumter. And then it ended on April 9, 1865. That's the day that General Lee surrendered to General Grant at Appomattox. Those are clear, well-defined events. But perhaps surprisingly, there were other events that blur that ending date of the war. So when did the war really end? Depends on who you ask, and even on how they define war. There's no question that things had not been going well for the Confederacy for some time. In 1863, the Battle at Gettysburg and the Siege of Vicksburg had exceptionally heavy casualties on both sides, but the Confederacy lost much of its leadership as well and never really recovered. It is important to note that Confederate President Jefferson Davis never commissioned his troops to surrender. When General Robert E. Lee surrendered his Confederate troops to the Union's General Ulysses S. Grant at Appomattox Courthouse on April 9, 1865, the decision was Lee's. At Appomattox, the Confederate troops had been outnumbered three to one, and their supplies were very limited. Lee was faced with a difficult choice whether to continue the fight in what was an increasingly hopeless war, or to surrender to stop what he called the useless sacrifice of those whose past services have endeared them to their countrymen. Lee's surrender to Grant at Appomattox was so significant that many people consider this to be the end of the war. But was it? The celebration that the North was enjoying over Lee's surrender came to a sudden end on the evening of April 14th. Just five days after Appomattox, President Abraham Lincoln was fatally shot as he watched a play in Ford's Theater, and he died the following morning. After Appomattox and then Lincoln's assassination, Jefferson Davis and his cabinet moved from Virginia further south while still planning future strategies. Jefferson Davis was captured in Georgia on May 10, 1865, and was held in captivity for the next two years. So there are some people who consider the capture of Jefferson Davis as the end of the war, since the Confederate government no longer existed. But was that the end of the war? Even though both the Union and the Confederacy clearly knew of Lee's surrender, and there had been a series of other formal surrenders in several places throughout the country, skirmishes and even a few battles continued after Appomattox. The war's last land battle is considered by many to be the one that took place on May 12th and 13th as the Battle of Palmetto Ranch at the tip of southern Texas. Ironically, this was a Confederate victory, even though they were heavily outnumbered. Although the reasoning behind this battle, and even the number of casualties, is still debated, it is generally agreed that the last combat fatality of the war took place during this battle. It was Private John J. Williams of the 34th Indiana. So does the last land battle or the last combat fatality mark the end of the war? On January 1st, 1863, President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, declaring that all persons held as slaves within the rebel states are and henceforward shall be free. It didn't become an amendment to the Constitution, however, until January 31st, 1865, and was finally ratified on December 6th, 1865. It was during the time of this ratification process that on June 19, 1865, 
federal troops arrived in Galveston, Texas. Even though the Emancipation Proclamation happened two and a half years earlier, and the surrender at Appomattox was two months earlier, slavery in Texas had been mostly unchanged. U.S. General Gordon Granger read the notice that declared, in accordance with the proclamation from the Executive of the United States, all slaves are free. This official announcement brings many people to consider June 19, 1865, also known as Juneteenth, to be the end of the Civil War. But was it? In 1864, a sailing ship, the CSS Shenandoah, became part of the Confederate Navy. Its goal was to capture and destroy Union merchant vessels, and it was having great success doing so. On August 2nd, while near Alaska, the Shenandoah's captain, James Waddell, received word of the events of the war that had happened weeks earlier, including the capture of Jefferson Davis. Concerned that his ship would be captured, Waddell removed the ship's armaments and stowed them below deck, and then disguised the ship with paint to make it look like an ordinary merchant ship. It then headed out to sea and reached Liverpool, England on November 6, 1865. There it surrendered to British authorities and lowered the Confederate flag one last time. So, did this final lowering of the Confederate flag mark the end of the war? On December 6, 1865, slavery in America was formally abolished when the 13th Amendment to the Constitution was ratified. Did this mark the end of the war? On April 2, 1866, President Andrew Johnson issued a proclamation stating that the insurrection was over in all of the former Confederate states but one. That would be Texas, which had not yet succeeded in establishing a new state government. After the new Texas government was established and recognized by the United States, on August 20, 1866, President Andrew Johnson finally issued the proclamation that said insurrection is at an end and that peace, order, tranquility, and civil authority now exist in and throughout the whole United States of America. This proclamation declared the war was officially over and the era of Reconstruction was just getting started. But did Johnson's declaration of peace, order, tranquility, and civil authority really end the war? I'll leave that up to you to decide. Tell me in the comments which event you consider to be the end of the Civil War. Regardless of which date any of us choose, we certainly can learn from the past, but we do not live there. Go be awesome today and make your own history. Stick around for some more videos. Here's a playlist about the Civil War to get you started.